The aim of experiment A12 is to calculate an equilibrium constant, a Kc value, so in terms of concentrations, experimentally. Now, it's a two-part experiment, and the first part of the experiment involves setting up the equilibrium mixture. So if you can imagine a conical flask like this, and four separate purettes, all set up with the starting materials, and if you look in the table then, there's four different reactants that need to be added to that conical flask. So you would take glacier, which is liquid concentrated ethanoic acid, um, and add a known volume of that from a burette. Add to that ethanol liquid to the conical flask as well, and also some distilled water liquid to the conical flask, and 2.00 centimetres cubed of this hydrochloric acid which is 1.00 moles, moles per decimeter cubed, so its concentration is well known. So two centimeters cubed of uh, one molar hydrochloric acid would go in the flask. Now because this system has to reach equilibrium, that has to be set up in advance. And so that has happened in advance. And if I come to uh, a different bench slightly, here we have an equilibrium mixture that was prepared uh, almost a week ago now, which is ready to use for part two of this experiment. In part two of this experiment, the aim is to titrate some of the equilibrium mixture to quantify the moles of ethanoic acid which remain in equilibrium. And of course, if we know the start moles of ethanoic acid and the equilibrium moles of ethanoic acid, then that unlocks all of the equilibrium moles across um, all of those reactants and products. Now, in the burette here, I've already filled that with and rinsed it with the 0 0.100 moles per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide solution. So I've taken a standard solution of sodium hydroxide, that's one with a well-known concentration, and used that in the burette over here. Uh, and just as a normal titration, record the start values and so on. There's some sample data for this that you can work with in due course if you need to do so. To analyse the mixture then, the equilibrium mixture is here, which has been equilibrating now for ju just about a week, and I'm just going to very carefully take the, the stopper off this. Now, because this releases um, fairly um, corrosive fumes around here, sometimes that stopper gets a bit stuck, so it's important to do that nice and carefully so that um, you don't get in contact so that it doesn't sort of splash up at you. And of course, I've got the splash proof goggles on um, as well. <laughs> I can all, already smell it. I'm in a ventilated room. I can also already kind of smell a mixture of a vinegary smell and a kind of a, a fruity estuary smell. So that's a good sign that this equilibrium mixture is working and is, has, has set up nicely. So the first thing that I need to do, according to the method, is use a 1.00 centimetre cube pipette. Now look at the precision on that. That is not one of these dropping pipettes. This would be very, very approximate and not at all precise. A 1.00 centimetre cube pipette needs to be quantitative, needs to be... Um, precise and accurate, and so I've got one that looks like this. So this is just like any other graduated pipette that you use, it's just a smaller size. So I'm gonna take this pipette, and I'm gonna pop it in here, and I'm just gonna rinse it out with some of that equilibrium mixture. Now I need to be really careful not to use too much of that mixture, because I don't have huge quantities of it. The total volume that we've got in this flask, remember, is 20.0 centimeters cubed. So if I lose loads of it when I do the rinse, I'm not gonna have enough to do the analysis. So just as with any other pipette, just twisting that round, making sure the insides are coated nicely with that solution, and that is gonna go into the sink, just like so, to rinse out. Pop the filler back on, making sure that I support that glassware up at the filler like so. And again, I'm just going to pop that pipette into the mixture, and very, very carefully and slowly, because there's a tiny volume, so this will move really quickly. So carefully and slowly, just slightly overfill that, as always with a pipette. Push it up with the thumb, put your thumb across, allow that to drain gently and carefully under gravity by just reducing pressure on the thumb until the bottom of the meniscus just sits on the appropriate graduation mark. It's almost there. Like that. And then drain it under gravity into the flask that I'm going to use for the titration. So just allowing that to drain under gravity into that flask. I'm just going to put this bung back on the top of that loosely just to avoid quite too many of those fumes in the room. And then as always, just touch the surface with that pipette and sit that nice and safely so that it can't roll and smash. 
The next thing to do is to add about 100 centimetres cubed of distilled water to this mixture. That doesn't matter about that being particularly accurate, so that's going in a measuring cylinder. But I'm just going to pop all of that in there, and you can have a think about why that might be um, added in this example. Give it a little swirl to mix it up like so. I'm going to add the appropriate indicator, which is in this case we're going to use some phenolphthalein indicator. So I'll add one, two, three drops phenolphthalein. Actually, at the moment it looks colourless in here. In fact, I might add another couple of drops because there's quite a big volume there, and so I want to make sure I'll be able to see the colour nice and clearly. Uh, I would have recorded the start volume on this uh, burette. Now, importantly, because this is a system at equilibrium, it's important to add the substance from the burette really quickly to minimise the equilibrium position shifting. So I'm going to open the tap really fast and swirl it, swirl it, swirl it, swirl it and keep an eye on the colour of the indicator. And the first time that that colour is permanently pink or permanently pinky purple, I will stop adding. And of course, that will be then the rough titer. Then when I repeat this titration, again, it's really important to add really, really rapidly until you're almost at the end point and then add dropwise, but also quite quickly adding dropwise, again, to minimize that equilibrium position shifting. So it's a bit different in terms of titration technique. It's really quite important to be speedy on this one. Otherwise that equilibrium position will continue to shift and then you won't actually manage to get an end point. It's looking fairly close now. Still going, still going, and that's the permanent pink purple colour, just like that.